Hello and welcome to another college tutorial for SolidWorks 2017. Um, today what we're going to look at is how to produce a technical drawing for an assembly. Um, so we've looked at how we actually make the 3D assembly so we can check limits of its. This one is about producing the technical drawing to go with it for obviously helping people assemble what they've made. So much the way, same way as we do with any technical drawing, go to layout, model view. We can browse for our parts obviously this time rather than doing the part they're going to do the assembly we can tell the difference because it says uh, solid assemb and if you look at the type here it does say SOLIDWORKS assembly okay so I'm just going to click on that one okay so same as before we got preview turned on uh, so for assemblies we still do um, an orthographic projection the same as we do with everything else so let's throw our couple of views in here just so we get an idea of what it looks like from every direction a little isometric in there as well just to give us a proper overview um, probably let's say that scales about right um, we'll turn on some, turn on the hidden detail on the views so we can see what's going on and then turn it off again on the isometric uh, just so we've got everything there um, I would like that a slightly larger scale but I don't think it's going to fit or maybe just about because as with all things, if it's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit easier to see. Now the problem with this, of course, is we need to make sure we leave ourselves enough room. Because it's all very well having this lovely assembly drawing, but on assemblies, we don't put any dimensions, because we've done all that in our previous drawings. So what we need to do is to reference all of these parts back to those individual technical drawings that have all the information in them. So to do that, we need what's called a bill of materials. Now, a bill of materials, is found here. So we go to annotations, tables, and we get a bill of materials. You could just knock up a generic table, um, but there's no point in doing that. We'll just use bill of materials and SOLIDWORKS will do most of the work for us. Bill of materials. Select one of the views as it says here. And then it comes up with lots of options. I've never found a reason for changing these really. The sort of stuff we're doing we won't need to. So if we just hit the tick, it generates our table for us. I'm just going to tuck that up here out of the way. There we go, that looks nice and neat. Okay. So we can see straight away, tables filled out, item numbers, part numbers, and description. Part number is whatever you saved the, each individual part as. So I saved all of these as uh, the drawing numbers in effect. So I did drawing number for the file name and then obviously create the drawing. Description. There is a way to get SOLIDWORKS to generate the description for you. Um, it's a little bit more advanced and I haven't covered it yet so we're just going to leave it there. The other way is you can type it in yourself. All you have to do is double click on the box and type it in. Now obviously I can't remember off the top of my head which one of these is which so I need to label them first so I can find it out. Now again the clever thing with SOLIDWORKS here is it works out which bit's which. So if we go to the balloon function, providing you've already put the bit of materials in, when you click on any of the parts it automatically jumps in telling you which part it is. So that's not very clear really because it's not very clear which one's which so I'm going to delete that one and we're going to do them from here. So we've got that one's three, that one should be four, that one I think is one, there we go, and that one's two and we've got the tool makers, there we go, and we've got the retaining screw up there and the keep plate there. There we go. So straight away I've managed to label everything up there so we can see it. So we've got one plane jaw, two is the uh, threaded oh we need to make sure everything's always in capitals. Jaw. Yeah. Um, so there you go, number three is this one. So that's the shoulder screw. Uh, we've got number four which is the rear screw. Five is our keep plate. And six is our retaining screw. So that's obviously what we're looking for. Now, sometimes it'll come up with a little icon. Uh, nope. 
which I've managed to turn off of my edition because it irritated me. But basically, sometimes when you go into this table, because obviously it relies on what's here, if you um, try to change something in it, it says, do you want to break the link? Um, you have to obviously hit yes, otherwise it will just leave it as the value it was before. So if you don't break the link, if you try keeping it, it will keep it as whatever it thinks it should be, not whatever you tell it to be. So it's important that you break the link. Okay. So that's basically it for the actual technical drawing side. You've done all that. The only real difference in here is now when we do our uh, data block, we need to still put a description in. So that would be um, Toolmaker's Clamp Assembly. Drawing um, would be the next number. Um, in the sequence, so TMC07. Yeah. Now, material. There is no material on an assembly drawing, same as there is no finish. Um, this is because all the parts could, in theory, be made from different materials and finishes. So we have to be um, careful that we don't tunnel the same brush. And we know that if we link back to the individual drawings, that they will tell us the material and finish. Same with tolerance. There's no dimensions on this drawing, so there is no tolerance. Um, and scale, I set to one to one. There we go. Okay, that's it. So that's how you produce a uh, technical assembly drawing. Now, same as usual, though, we don't do anything with the isometric it's just there for reference we don't label it okay same as we don't dimension isometric views okay um so cool yeah thank you for watching